Hi there, it's Kat here. How are you all? Welcome to my channel. This is a quick pan of my finished craft room. Pretty much finished. This is my inside craft room. I still have my craft studio outside. It's just way too hot for me to craft in. So I've had to reorganize everything. Huge shout out and thank you to Cara Brandon, her Let's Get Organized 2022 collab. So I'm going to share with you my process and just some tips. And if you hang around to the end, I've got a little freebie for you. So I will make this part fairly quick. This is just a little um, organization, like a little spreadsheet that I've done. So I was hugely inspired, as I said, by watching Cara Brandon's um, little collab playlist that she's got. And I will link the playlist um, into the description down below. So one of the ladies had um, a daughter who was, um, I think she was a professional organizer. And I was just so impressed. It was the the big game changer for me and it made me think about a structure to how I craft and then from that I would organize my craft room around that so I went through and I went and uh, pretty much used similar but then I adapted it to myself so you know here I've got what do I make junk journals what type do I make and then I've got vintage themed mixed art mixed media art journals altered little golden books and then I've gone through and I've gone what tools do I use for each step so I've broken everything down between cover signatures spine alter embellishing the pages binding closure decorated elements ephemera etc then I've also gone through and what materials do I use for each step? So I've gone through and I've just created a list of everything. And this is not an extensive list. I will add to this and uh, as I actually do start using it and crafting, I will add to it. But I think it's covered quite a lot of things so cover signatures spine alter embellished pages so for example recycled book cover um, you know for the cover chipboard cereal boxes so basically every single supply that we need to create our journals I've got as I said a fairly extensive list here now what I did like about this um, method is you know went through what tools do I use constantly and what materials do I use constantly because of this con concept of zone one zone two zone three so zone one would be all of the tools and materials that I use constantly which is glue scissors cutters scoreboard pliers erasers tweezers sandpaper paintbrushes blending tools sewing machine bone folder etc you get the idea and materials distress ink paper collage materials dyes paints stamps die cuts etc so my zone one would be my office desk and my shelves and my pegboard in front of me. And I will flip the camera around shortly. Zone two is just the other grab two elements that as I'm making, I want to have them around within reach. So to me, zone one and zone two is my inside craft room. And zone three is my outside craft studio where I'm not that worried about storing things in there because of the heat. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to go through and show you what I've done and hopefully this will inspire and also don't worry there's a freebie I have because I've gone to the trouble of creating this list I formatted it into a pdf for you so that you can download it and you can reference it if you want to reorganize your craft room to work for you because let's face it if we have a craft room and we've got stuff everywhere but we can't ever find anything or it's too much of a hassle to get it's going to kind of put a dampener on our crafting but I have been making a few things since I've done my room and oh, it's just so so good I'm just so happy with what I've done so I wanted to start with my actual desk so if I just uh, wheel back on my chair a little bit this is my desk where I work so underneath um, you can't really see I guess the lighting's not too good but I do have um, not, I'm trying not to put too much under there but I do have a cutter this is a huge cutter and uh, my dog's um, bed and then I've got some cords and stuff but I really have avoided putting much stuff under my desk because I don't really want to clutter up that area so then I've got my actual desk and obviously I've got my work area there and I've got my filming um, you know apparatus and a lamp there but 
I have got where the pegboard is there you can see I've got all my pens and I've got scissors I've also got my um, if you have a look I'll come in a little bit closer you'll see I've got hand cream I've got pliers and then I've got all my dyes and um, sprays and just you know my mixed media kind of stuff here yeah, I've got these little containers here which I've got buttons in there but I'm definitely going to go through those and I'm going to sort those out a little bit better so that's that side of that and then I've got you know I've got a few scissors here um, so this is a necklace stand and I picked it up in an op shop so I thought that was really cool to hang my scissors from I've got my little sidekick here so if I just want to do any little die cutting I've got that there and just if I come through here I've got my corner punches and I've got a little dish here that's just got like my blending tools I've got these magic erasers which are so good if you uh, you know spill a little bit of glue um, or like when you're pressing down on something a little bit of glue squelches on the side you get that shiny um, bit of glue but that will actually take it off um, speaking of glues that's my glues there and I've got some buttons and um, so that's you know as you can see I've got my glue gun there just in the back there I've got um, some doilies and some scraps like fabric clusters and things like that when I pull my um, sewing machine down so I've got it just above me on a shelf and I can pull down my sewing machine as I need it and behind my sewing machine I've got my um, fabrics which I have wrapped onto foam board um, I'm quite lucky that I can get access to them for free. Um, someone I know has a shop and they do poster boards and they get a lot of off cuts. So it's been so good, such a good way to um, store my fabrics so I can see at a glance exactly what colours and patterns I've got. Uh, I did want to show something else but I can't think of it. But um, as I pull my sewing machine down I've got a little um, needle and thread sewing kit down there and in here I've got my bobbins and then I've got um, if I show you I can easily just quickly change my threads over so I've got my dies here and I've got washi tapes I've got a little bin here I've got some stamps um, and these are my ideas journal I've got my pliers just hanging up here so I think that's pretty much covered that so you know we're still talking about zone one here now if I come up here I'm really really happy with this little system cutting trimmer thing here <laughs> sorry and um, this is my sewing machine just a little uh, plate and then I've got my scoreboard I've got an envelope maker outside which I will bring here and just in these little drawers here I've got my scraps and just, I call it fodder and stuff. Um, so I can rifle through there and just add embellishments. Now here I've got my embossing folders. So I can just pull that down and I've got stamps in here, which I will go through those and I'm going to put my everyday, you know, just stamps that I use commonly, I'm going to put in there. Up here, I have got um, my punches and here I've got my, this is my genuine vintage ephemera. So I've got in here, I've got time cards and score, um, you know, like bridge score cards and just catalogs and just like, you know, things when I've gone thrifting that I found. On the top shelf here, like this top drawer, I'll bring it down and I'll show you what I've got in here. And this just reminds me of what I've got. Um, I've got my Kodak slides here. I've got um, vintage reinvolt forces that I found. I've got like little coin holders in here. I've got fabric, little, um, you know, the little fabric scrappies, you know, little bits of fabric that I've stamped images on. I've got tickets. I've got tea bag holders, inventory tags here, guest checks. I've got my DVD sleeves here and I've got some um, folders, file folders here. So I'm really happy with this system. Actually, um, in the new year, I reorganized my kitchen and I ordered one of these um, to go in my pantry and I didn't end up needing it. And then 
as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, I just love this. This is going to be so good in my craft room. So I ended up ordering six of them and I've cleared that shelf and I've got another three that I've ordered. So I'm going to extend across there. So at the top here, I've got my Daphne diary magazines and I've got all my buttons and I've got fabric snippet rolls and paper snippets that I've made a little bit of yarn there so again they're all within reach so this is what I would call my zone one area I've got my computer here so if I need to do work on my computer I can do that I've actually just gotten into digital design um, I've done a course and I've made a couple of kits up and I'm in the process of finishing another kit so I can just easily just swivel over here when I'm crafting I've got my tablet which I've got a stand here and I'm just going to put my tablet down there so as I'm crafting I can watch something if I want or I can just put my, put my computer on and I can listen to a podcast or something like that. So if I come across here, so there's my dyes, um, sorry my inks. Um, so I've got my archival inks and I've got my distress inks and I've got some distress oxide um, stamp pads there. I've got that little draw unit there which I did do a tutorial on how to make that which I will link and in here I've got my paints and like more kind of mixed media I guess you could say. I've got my Posca pens and I've got gelatos there. I've got woodies and I've got my palettes and uh, mark making tools. So down here I managed to fit in one of those Ikea drawers. Now, I'm pretty happy with it, but I am going to fine tune it. Um, just this little space here, I've got my book, which I make notes, and I've got um, things like I've got a woolen mat, and then I've got some other little scoreboards. So that, that's quite handy, that little area there. It just fits in there. Um, so when I do courses and stuff, I make notes. So that's what that is. In here, I've got like my sewing kind of notions. Um, I'll just give you a little pan there of what's in there. Um, if you want more detail, I'm more than happy to go through that. Um, this is all kind of my laces. And this is like my fabric... Um, you know to make fabric clusters or just if I need to grab a little bit of scrap fabric this is kind of like a bit of a when I do my Etsy orders I've got a um, set of scales there they're my labels and I've got my foot for my um, my sewing machine and down here I've got um, they're my seed beads and buttons I'm going to probably sort that out a little bit better and then here this is all my lovely laces and fabrics um, and just really special stuff that I've ordered from Etsy or things that I've collected along the way that's just that extra special. So that's in the bottom drawer there. So moving to the right of me when I craft, um, I've got that ledge there and what I've done, that's kind of like my pretties. Um, I've also got my wooden stamp blocks there which is really lovely to have them out and to remind me of what I've got um, I've just got some lovely pictures there and that's a little ledge um, I've just got buttons in there and if I come down here now this is a printer that I've got and it sort of also serves as a bit of a, another ledge for me um, I do scan on this one it's a HP um, I don't know it's a what is it it's a HP let's don't mind the cords there that's what it is office jet pro 6960 it's done me well um i like doing that for some printing uh the little stand that it's on i've just got books in here reference books mainly my planner books and things like that so if i come up here i've got my um that's a board that I do have plans to do some projects and hang that on there. Uh, I have got just nothing much really in here. There's some clusters in, in here and these are some altered index cards. Uh, 
again it's probably just really more my pretties I've got a few stencils there which are just remnants from where I had them before I will move those these two cases here um, I've altered one of them in the middle um, like sorry I've altered this one I haven't quite finished it I've got a few more ideas on to do that uh, I did post that in a few junk journaling Facebook groups and everyone really loved the idea so this second one here I'm going to alter that um, so I'll put a picture in um, as I said I haven't quite finished it but it's kind of I'm using it at the moment but um, I'm planning on doing a tutorial on how to alter that uh, so in this little bookcase here I got this from Bunnings and just over there I've got some files this is kind of mainly my own planners and stuff that I use and this one here is is another area that I keep my laces in just for the one eventually I'll clear out that drawer and I'll keep my laces probably in there or vice versa I'll clear that out and put them in the drawer these are this is handmade ephemera in here and these are just they're like paintbrush um, containers, but what I've done, like these are some paper bows that I die cut out and also just some fussy cuts. Uh, what I also do is, you know, those Tim Holtz die cut flowers. I, you know, like the wild flowers and, you know, the long stem ones. I do die cut them out and put them in there, but I've just been doing a project where I've used a lot of them up, so they're currently empty. And... <coughs> pardon me uh, these two I've got handmade ephemera in there that um, every time I go to use them I kind of don't really think they suit the journal I'm making so I'm not really a massive fan of making things in advance um, that's been my experience anyway these are just a few more folders I am going to um, like my digi kits I'm going to print out and store those there that's my stamping platform and this is my ephemera a couple of ephemera books these here I've got things like um, envelopes and paper bags so again this is kind of my zone 2 area and in here I've got cardstock I've also got copy paper and I've got like nice book pages that I've kind of pulled aside that I could use as covers or you know just special feature pages in ephemera uh, as, as ephemera for when you're making journals bottom two I've just got fabric in there just like big bits of fabric that I want to cut up and um, sort out so they are kind of all sorted out but you know like this one here is a nice um, quilt that I picked up in an op shop and I want to cut cut that up. This is one of my Raskog trolleys and this is like my zone one. So the idea is, is when I sit and craft, I pull this out and I've got glues. I've got my crocodile here, paint brushes, more paint brushes. I've got my blending tools. Um, you know, I've got scissors. You know, I've just got things that I just reach for, like, you know, craft knife. This is, you know, my sanding block. I've got another Tim Holtz pair of scissors. Down here, I've got some more mixed media stuff. And this is a bit of a mess. Um, but in here, I've got my binding tools ready to go. And I've got baby wipes and more glue bottles and things. But I will sort that shelf out there. So... The only drawback is because my room is, and sorry, this camera um, angle is probably not the best. On the door, I've got some trims and more fabrics. And these are kind of like lace trims and really embellished um, pieces of sari and just pretty lace trims and stuff. And I've got my sari silks in there. So I do know what's in here. That's thread and i've got fusing um wadding and things like that. i've got one of these trolleys but it's not very stable so i kind of have to keep it in here and in the drawers i've got things like um their bags like their calico bags 
and that's just um, threads and cross stitch patterns that I've purchased there. Sewing patterns and just more sewing patterns. So that they've all been filled and I will label them, but I do pretty much know what's in there. So I guess this is kind of like my excess stuff, um, but stuff that I don't want to put outside in my craft studio. So this is the cabinet that my partner put in for me. And there are some of my junk journals that I've made or been gifted. And just up the top there, I've got things like paper, FM, open up the door. Um, they're just paper ephemera bits and just metal findings. I, I got bingo cards in there. Like I do know what's in there roughly, but I can easily just grab it and pull it down. But it's not something I'll pull down every single time. It's probably something at the beginning of a journal that I would pull them down and go through and just, you know, audition and just sort of decide, well, will I do that or will I use that or not? That little wombat there was my mum's <laughs> when she was in hospital. We gave that to her. So I've always kept that. So yeah. I've got another trolley here. Oh, before I get into that, that's my printer that I use. It's a laser printer and it's an Oki MC363 and it's brilliant. Um, I, it, I When I replaced the cartridges and it was only one colour that actually did need replacing, it was the yellow, and the lady looked up on the system for me and it was a year. Um, okay, granted, I probably didn't really print a huge amount, but I did plenty of printing, and um, I'm def that's why I've got two printers. I use the the HP printer for I do like the look of that, um, especially for vintage work. Um, but the problem with that is that you can't tea dye the papers, and even though I have fed tea dye papers through there and printed on it, it's um, it, it takes it, but but I also do like using the HP for printing on fabric and um, vellum and things like that. I don't dare print on that. So my laser printer is where I print my digi kits, especially if I want to tea dye them. So this little chest of drawers here, I mean, the top drawer is nothing exciting. I did buy one of these, but it was it's faulty, and um, I'm getting a replacement. So. Um, I'm looking forward to making some of those, you know, those embossed um, labels when that is sorted. But that's kind of just like a stationary drawer. This one here, it's just all my cords and I've honestly tried to declutter that, but I can't declutter it any more than what I have. But this one here is where I've put my tea dye papers and my vellum. I've put them you know, digi die cut negatives and digi kits, Tracy, digi kits, cardstock, got Roxy, digi kits, Roxy there, um, vellum, these are file folders, you know, just scraps that I've sorted out and I call it scrap colour and then I've got scrap word, scrap book page. So I thought that was a good way of... Um, sorting all that so I guess really we're coming to the end the only other thing is I've got all my um, acrylic paints in that my partner did that he um, sometimes comes in here because he's the night shift worker and he doesn't want to disturb the rest of the family while we're sleeping so he hangs his clothes in here and gets changed in here and this was in the way and he just hung it up here but I really liked it so I've kept that and then on the back of the door here is some upholstery fabric samples that I'm going to cut down and um, use them on spines of journals and things like that so I think that's pretty much it like down here I've got my Tim Holtz um, tonic studio plate so I did just want to show you how I use this Rascog trolley here. So that's my Big Shot Plus that is on the top there. And that board there is from Ikea and it's made to fit the Rascog trolley. I don't know if it's made only for the Rascog trolley, but I'll just lift my... I'm just trying to figure out how I'll do this because these are heavy. So that board lifts off. And then in this first trolley here, um, I've actually just bought new plates for my Big Shot and I've seen a hack on YouTube to save your 
plates from getting all scratched up. So I'm going to try that out, which is why I've got those in there. So if I just bring this a bit closer, that's my little foam mat. Um, so, you know, when you do the intricate dies and then you use the little brush, which the brush I've got in my other trolley, which is my zone one area. So I've got that in my little caddy there. Um, so these are just all my framelits. I need to make little um, envelopes. So if I look down in my second drawer down here, or my second tray rather, I made these, these little envelopes. And some of them have got magnetic, like that one's magnetic. And some of them I used um, Velcro. There you go. So um, I will link the video for that because I've got some templates that you can use. So I will spend some time and make covers for these. So that's what's in my first um, tray. In my second tray... These are ones that have already made little packets for, and these ones, like Sizzix ones, have already got their own pockets, so I just obviously keep them in there. And then my very bottom tray, I've got the um, the bigger ones. They're generally Sizzix, and they're the alterations, movers and shapers. So I wanted to show you that. This one I cannot keep in my... Um, in my craft room because I just don't have the room so my partner very kindly moved the ironing board area around a bit for me so I now slot that in there and that's just in the passageway across the room so back to that trolley there um, when I fix my suitcase that I had altered I will put some of that in there because this is like my work in progress trolley, but it um, doesn't really work very well for me. So a lot of that um, will be cleaned out and put into the suitcase. And then those two, they will probably go back into my craft studio. So hopefully this video has given you some ideas and some inspiration on perhaps if you're looking at reorganizing your crafting area, just some ways that you can maybe add a little bit more structure to it, to the way you craft. I have been using my new layout now for about oh, three or four days now and I'm absolutely loving it. It's so good having everything in logical sense and within reach. So this PDF here is available for download for free. I will link it in the description box below. It's um, linked to through buy me a coffee um, as I said it's absolutely free but if you do feel like you want to make a donation that is entirely up to you it helps support my channel so that I can create videos they do take a long time to make videos and then there's the editing and the production and putting everything together so I have just started um, doing digital kits so it helps me get my resources together for that um, if you want to check out my Etsy shop I have got a couple of um, well about three or four digi kits up there now so thank you very much if you do decide uh, but if not that's no problem because I'm here to give value as well and tutorials and such so thank you very much for watching and I will be busy planning my next video which I will upload soon. Um, have a great um, rest of your evening or day, wherever you are, and take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.